just like for old times. Bang! What's going on, people? Shout out to Arnold Palmer. Just a regular Arnold Palmer. Hashtag not an ad. Ah, what a beverage. What a beverage. What is going on, guys? Festive 24 here. Back again with another episode of A Set Plan. In today's episode, our journey in Division 4 continues. And we're also going to have, hopefully, some major changes to the team. Before we get to that, though, your comments, they're necessary. It's what we do now. Let's see what we got. On injury bug, your backup goalie should not be on the wheel because obviously they don't play. I'll re-spin the wheel. I'm not making a whole nother wheel for the sake of that. I'll re-spin the damn thing. I don't really like the team shuffle. Uh, basically, to take this comment from Elon, I don't like the team shuffle either because it's a massive pain in the ass to set up. So I think what I'm going to do with the team shuffle now is something along the lines of what was suggested as well. There was another comment here as well. God, where was it? Marks Carlson's uh, for a silver team challenge. So what I'm going to do, team shuffle is now changing. It's no longer, no longer going to be defensemen become forwards, forward become defensemen. Team shuffle is going to be, I have to play as many silver cards as I possibly can on our team. So if I have space to play golds, I can do that. But the silvers, at least as many of them as I can play, have to be in the lineup. The thing is, we don't have that many silver cards on the you know on the team right now in the collection because of the amount of sets that we've been able to do. So I think that'll work a little bit better and will be a little bit less frustrating. It's not because I lost in the last game with the team shuffle challenge. If you guys like the idea of it still being defense become forward, forward become defenseman, or maybe limiting it so it's not the whole team, let me know. But I think for this episode we'll change it up and knowing my luck. We won't even get the Team Shuffle Challenge this time out. Maybe we should do bronze packs for debut packs. Not a terrible idea. Because at least in that way, we know that we wouldn't be going overboard. And as it is, I'm not saying that if we do a set plan again, it would be with bronze packs. Maybe it would be, though. So it could be kind of an early look into the future. I'm now a believer in silver packs, as you should be. I'm telling you, they are overpowered as hell. If you hear the dog rustling around with the blankets, you know what? Here, here. That's right. Yeah, look at you. What are you doing? You don't even know. You don't even know. Anyway, you are being ridiculous, but I'm leaving this in. Screw it. Screw your audio quality. And here's the one that I really wanted to, to address. Austin, don't worry, I don't take offense to it, unless you wanted me to, in which case, well, I'm sorry, I didn't take offense to it, but you just credit yourself by having an excuse 99% of the time. In my humble opinion, and I, I swear on the Palmer, in my humble opinion, breaking down what I was seeing with the play and what went wrong, because if a goal is scored, something went wrong, breaking down what I see, you know, in terms of how that happened, what I felt should have happened, what I was doing on the controller, that's not making an excuse. It's just not. In my opinion, it might be to somebody else. So, hey, if you view that as me blaming the game, sorry. I, I don't view it that way. I view it, I mean, what do you want me to say? Just like, oh, I, well, I was trying to switch, but good goal. Like, n well, no. Nobody does that. You start to think in your head, okay, what happened? And considering this is a video, it's kind of my job to talk and explain. So you see how, you, you see, you see what it is. That said, let's get down. Wow, this has been like four minutes already? Fuck's sake. No wonder why these videos are 40 minutes long. Let's get down to business, shall we? We have a couple of things to get to. Now, not only do we have some unopened packs, and there are a couple of, eh, one big one, one big one. Might be another one. We have the lovely, lovely Nations of Hockey Choice Pack. For those of you who don't know what this is, we are about to get a very high rated loan item for the next five to six days, which is huge. We also get a free jersey, which is very much going to help with the trade-in sets. The question is, who the hell do I take? There is Evgeny Malkin, there is Marion Hossa, TJ Oshie, Henrik Zetterberg, Sidney Crosby, Leon Dreisaitl, David Pasternak, and Teemu Solani. And I have to be honest here. I took Teemu Solani on my main account. I haven't used him yet. I might 
pick him up again. It's tough because I am very happy with the top six right now, but something's got to change. And I think, I mean, if we if we go with Solani, the top line is then Pasternak, Sagan, Solani. Or not Pasternak, Taylor Hall, Sagan, Solani, which is ridiculous. I mean, no matter who we take here, obviously, they're going to be the best item on the team. I'm just going to go with my favorite player out of the group, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That is that's gonna be Tamu Solani. I can't help it. I want to use this card so so badly. As far as the jersey is concerned, I basically get to pick my home jersey for the next game. And while that Canada logo or jersey is uh, is quite sweet, we have used the German road jersey. We're gonna use the German home jersey now in this series. So we have that Solani at the very least for the rest of this episode. And I'm probably going to make sure I record another episode with him before, uh, you know, that loan expires. So let's get to these packs. I will double check the trade in. And of course, setting up the team, we'll have to handle a couple of things before we get into our first game of the episode. But let's see, Ryan O'Connor, you are not helpful whatsoever. That's unfortunate. We have a gold common. We have that one rare. At the very least, we get Goron Bazina. K. Okay. You're, you're a player. Congratulations. Oh, shit. I opened up the gold rare. Well, let's hope we get something good. Come on. Yeah. Kyle Turris. Well, you know, he, he'll he be in the lineup, at least. I think that might be the death knell for the last samurai. Chris Tanev, also not good enough to get into the lineup right now. Might be more useful for the trade and set or just holding on to. And Jim O'Brien, who looks very happy to be here. So, we at least get Tamo Solani. I imagine Kyle Turris will be in the lineup, but I do want to double-check the player sets one more time before we get into this, just because the timer's up, and I want to see how close we are. Of course, there is one set that we currently can't do the trade-in for. That is the gold common, the silver rare to gold common. That timer will be up, though, more than likely, before we play the third game of the episode. So I guess the big question here is whether or not we have anybody in the gold common, the gold rare trade-in. Tanev, O'Brien, and Bazina. So, we get a decent start there, but nothing too amazing. For the re-roll, this is where it becomes interesting, because we might be able to do this. To get that other gold rare trade-in, I did use Braden Holpe. Again, I kind of want to show you guys as much as I possibly can, but also it's like, well, you know. Here, here's, the, here's the rough question. Do I use Jared Spurgeon and risk it because Tim Horton only has two games left? If I wanted to, I could use Jared Spurgeon and Kyle Turris. Or in fairness, I mean, man, Tavo and Schmaltz have both been great too. <sighs> I think it might be Zetterberg that would go. Turris doesn't have that great of face-offs. Do I use Kyle Turris and Jared Spurgeon knowing that if we don't get a good right-handed defenseman, that third pairing is going to be weak? But we could be... Oh, wait, Holpe's still there. I didn't trade in Holpe yet. Well, we're good to go then. Jared Spurgeon stays. And, uh, wow. That, okay. You have no idea how badly I want to restart this episode now. But I can't because I already opened packs, so we look foolish. We're going to go ahead and use Turris and Holpe. That's right. The plan was to use Holpe. Not that I had used him yet. Let's do this. Let's see if we can get one more major game changer onto this team. Holpe, see you later. Leonard is the backup once more. Let's see... What happens? Can we get a major game changer? I love me some Jeff Carter. He is one of my favorite players to use in Hut year in and year out. He will probably find his way into the lineup. I am going to spin the wheel first. The spotlight challenge I'll worry about in a moment. Let's spin the wheel first, though, to see if I have to change up the team. And the challenge is just play. So I'll take it. Nothing on the line outside of the spotlight player who we'll find out in a minute in a potential debut pack, uh, more than likely just for Jeff Carter. We'll be back in a second when the lineup is set. Tamo Solani as well, for that matter. All right, the team is set. Again, a little bit of a different look. Hall, Sagan, Solani, Teravine, and Matthew Schmaltz, Busick, Walker, Kessel, Zetterberg, Carter, and Arvidsson. So again, in this first game, at the very least, Solani scores, we get a bronze pack. If Jeff Carter scores... 
we get a bronze pack. That's how we're going to do it from now on. The defense is still Horton Park, Subban Krug, Petrangelo Chara, and again, the goaltending, Flurry and Robin Leonard. So let's get into finding out who our spotlight player is going to be for the episode, and it is Tori Krug. Now again, I'm going to revert back to what the Spotlight Challenge was before. It's now a per-game basis, not a per-episode basis. So if Tori Krug gets three, four, or five points in a game, that is a silver pack, and it's five points. So let's be honest. That's, that's not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. So let's hope for some debut goals in our first game. Tamu. Oh, what a poke check from Schneider. Got Tony D'Angelo on his top line, but I swear, I think that's the, uh, the, um, Halloween, not the Halloween, the Thanksgiving cane. Tamu. Oh my god, this goalie! It's, I know it's Corey Schneider. God damn it. Oh, I didn't want Solani the back. Ooh, Tamu. Tamu. Yeah, that's a bronze pack, baby. Throw that glove. Third time was the charm. We get a goal on the opening, you know, on the opening set, the uh, play, the opening, the start of the game. Like, Tamu Solani just scored for me, man. I'm hyped. Taylor Hall. I don't even know what just happened there or how we healed that shot. Sagan, over. Oh, Taylor Hall was wide open. Come on, Halsey. Halsey. And Solani hits the post. Good chance there, though. Sagan keeps it in. Over. Timbits. Solani for Hall. Let's go. <laughs> Whew. I am, I am having to work for these goals. Tamu Solani. Two points on the night. Not much going for Tori Krug when there's that much offensive firepower. And I, I can't help but think... Even if we had it be like, oh, Tory Krug needs five points in an episode. He might not even hit that. Tamu. Tamu. Let's go. Three points for Tamu Solani. This card is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, maybe it just feels that way even more so, because obviously in this series we've used some low-level cards, and just mentally I'm used to being like, oh, okay, I'm recording Hut right now, I'm gonna be terrible, like, and these cards are gonna suck. I don't know what it is, that's gonna be a rage quit. Hat trick for Solani. Not the best player I've ever faced in the world, but just, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Solani just ripped him to shreds to shreds you say to shreds i say professor <laughs> oh my god Whew. well that is that is a damn fine way to begin an episode if there ever was one we do get at least a bronze pack for the solani debut goal and we get a silver pack for the rage quit so no extra bonuses with it being a just play but Tamu Solani, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what what a card. Like I said, I don't know if it's down to just I have been using weaker level cards. I don't know what it is. I don't care. That was that was fun. <laughs> it's fun to win, especially when Tamu freaking Solani makes it that damn easy as we just get coin boost. That's fine. So let's do this. I'm going to start off with the bronze pack. We're going to go with the base bronze pack for the, uh, not the rage quit, the debut goal. And then we'll go for our normal silver pack for the rage quit. So that's the obvious thing to think of is like, oh, as we get Alexi Makala. Uh, that, you know, once, uh, like if this works, we, you know, use bronzes. But man, I'm telling you, bronze packs, not exactly the same level of luck. I don't know if we would ever get anything good. We would have to rely solely on the trade in sets, I feel. Like, that's pretty much what it would become, even more so. It's like, okay, sets, or we're screwed. <laughs> so that would be, that would be, like, in a way, it's almost like if that were to be a series, this is a set plan light, because that would be the hardcore version of it. We get this silver pack for the Rage Quit. Let's see if we can get anything solid. Oh, yes, we're rocking the Rumble jerseys. I like it. And the Tampa Bay Lightning jerseys. Tim Kennedy. 
Welcome aboard. Those Germany jerseys only lasted for a game. Daniel Gunnarsson, Victoriaville Tigers logo, Colner Hyde, Darnell Nurse, Darnell Nurse, and Lucas Sedlak. That gives us enough to do the trade-in set. Beat Gerber getting two golds right there. That's huge. So we don't get anybody who's going to be joining the team outright. But those are some huge additions to the team because we're going to be able to do that rare trade-in. So in terms of logos... We're rocking the shark. Sorry, Victoriaville. We're going to be using the... I have, I'm fighting off a sneeze so hard. Uh, we're going to be rocking these two jerseys as well. And we're going to go do that upgrade set. So there is a decent chance. We don't know what version of our team we're going to be using. Uh, that, of course, depends on the wheel. But we're going to get one more rare player addition here. Thanks to that pack. So, again, like, no no crazy Taylor Halls or anything like that. But we'll be able to do this. So, Chris Tanev, sorry. Never going to get to use you. But there you go. Let's do this. And Darren Helm. In fairness, we only needed one gold out of that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Let's see. Another chance for another big-time player. Can we get lucky? Come on, Elias Lindholm, who's not bad, but I don't quite see how he's going to fit into the team at the moment. Perhaps once that Salani's gone, uh, after next episode, more than likely, he'll be able to make it into the team. But aside from that, I'm not really seeing it. It's him or Arvidsson. I could take a look, but it's diminishing returns either way, I'm sure, because Schmaltz isn't going anywhere. Like, he stays. I can't imagine I'm getting rid of Nick Schmaltz anytime soon. Hell, I'm running Tyler Sagan on the third... Or not Tyler Sagan, Phil Kessel on the third line. So let's go ahead, shall we, and spin the wheel for this second game. And it's the Silver Pack Rewards. So another fairly straightforward game. If we win, we get a Silver Pack. Rage quits on the line as well. And you know what? Victor Arvidsson is actually going to sit... I'm going to bring in Elias Lindholm, and that way we have a chance at a debut goal pack, even though I think, judging by those stats, I would have much rather kept Arvidsson. So again, Lindholm will be in debut reward pack on the line. That would be a bronze pack. Silver pack reward. If we win, we get the deal. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. Did I forget to switch it when I was showing you Elias Lindholm and putting him into the lineup? I sure did, but that's okay, because I'm great at what I do. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> Whoever gets the better of those plays right there, that's exactly who's going to win this game. Faked him! <laughs> no! Oh, my! Oh! 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 Uh-oh. That's... Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And we give it right back up with a 93 fucking Kucherov. I tried to... Jesus Christ, the ratings on his team. I tried to board play the guy. Uh, it didn't let me. I'm pretty sure I dragged the left defenseman down low. That was my first mistake for sure. Uh, why my center left that guy open? Don't know. But uh, it's Austin Matthews. We expect mistakes. Oh, Solani denied again. Flurry, you're a fucking madman. Jesus. So that player switch right there, who do you think I was trying to switch to? The right wing or the right defenseman who stood there and watched Joe Sackick snipe that? Note to self, by the way, uh, my Mark andre Fleury is not going to make a save. So that's unfortunate. A big moment there, and it just does not switch me to who it should. And Austin Matthews, you look, I'm bumping Matthews off the second line. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. He, that card, it's, it's terrible. He fucks up all the time. Loses 50-50s all the time. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Thank god he didn't score on that. Thank you, Schmaltz, for getting going. Terravine and backdoor. 
Yeah, we're going to lose. <laughs> I think it's official, don't you? <laughs> he scores that with Sackick, but that doesn't go in. Look at Subban just piloting. <clears throat> Please, Subban. Ugh, come on. Oh, at least get to overtime. PK is redemption. 250 left. PK is redemption. I won 150-50 on that blue line and immediately scored. It's a Christmas miracle. Come early. Not like this. Big save, Flurry. There you go. That's the type of save effort I need. And certainly not the pass. Oh my god, no. Not like this. Not like this with these random fucking 50-50... I'm just gonna randomly break up, you know, break this passing play up. Come on. Not like this. Not like this. Come on. Schmaltz, come on! I cannot snipe this flurry. It's insanity. Subban, great job. Redemption for Subban. Schmaltz! Another big save. We have 5.6 seconds in a game where I have not been able to win face-offs to win a face-off and avoid the shootout. Odds are not likely. Yeah, he read the tie-up. Smart. To, oh, or to a shootout, we go. Here we go. Our first shootout in a long time. Yes, this is the camera. Say again. Misses the goddamn net. I had him too. And Sagan misses the net. This is not the fixed goalie camera, EA. Get out of here. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Big save there from Flurry. Taylor Hall. Hits the post. This is unreal. Oh my god. I'm not meant to win this game, I swear. I don't feel like I'm meant to win this one. Flurry. I'm right there! He hits the post and it goes in! Are you kidding me? Off the post and in. Here we go. Let's try to fake him. Yes, Philly! Come on. I need a goddamn save, though. Off the post and in. Come on. Hits the post, outside of the post though at least. We're still alive. Come on. Nick Schmaltz. Come on. Come on. Let's go! Yes! Nick Schmaltz is the hero. Throw the hats in celebration. Oh my god, that was a stressful, stressful game. Let me tell you, apparently I have to frickin' earn my way to Div 3. Jesus. That was one of the most stressful games of this entire series. I'm gonna have to go get that hat again in a moment. Or we just won't be as festive. Jesus Christ. Whew. Nick Schmaltz. The hero. And again, that was just insane. We will have the other set to do again. For once, I actually get a free pack during the episode. Mike Leambas. Welcome. Good sir. You will be useful in terms of the trade-in. Jesus Christ, that game. That game was just absolutely ridiculous. That was the last game for Tim Horton as well, by the way. So keep that in mind. But I have... Oh, God, excuse me. So many things I want to look at here. Uh, first of all... First of all... 35, 24, and 5. Well, sir, you're better than your record indicates. Or, or, those computers were doing some fucking work for you. One or the other. Jesus Christ alive. This is the best team we've played this year. He has to be a comp player, right? He has to be a comp player. Like, he wasn't a bad player. I'm just, you know, I'm not saying like, oh my god, I feel like I'll just be the guy who's on the pro circuit, you know. But, he's a competent player. But, like, just Jesus Christ, this team. 
This goddamn team. He has everyone you'd ever want. <laughs> and his goalie, 91 flurry. That explains it, doesn't it? Jesus Christmas. Absolutely ridiculous. I do need to take a look at the leaderboard again, though. Can I see? I don't think I can see face-off percentage from here, can I? I can't. Oh, well. No, I definitely can't, unfortunately. Well, regardless, that was stressful, but we get the job done. We get the victory. Hallelujah. So that is a silver pack, and I believe a silver pack only. No goal for Elias Lindholm. I'm probably going to take him out of the lineup again for Arvidsson. And again, Jared Spurgeon will be back in. But we do get a silver pack thanks to the successful uh, silver pack challenge reward. I, again, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Let's see what happens here. And then we'll double check the set as well if we can do anything else. Riley Crane, Colby Roback, again, Noah Dobson. Not bad. Yes, come on. I deserve it after a win like that. 86 Christmas, L Oliver Ekman Larson. Whew. Oh, God. The only downside is he's not a right handed defenseman. I think that spells the end for Zidane Chara rather than Tori Krug. Let's go. Silver packs are overpowered. We'll be rocking the Cardiff Devils logo as well from the looks of it. No, we'll be uh, rocking the Maple Leafs logo. There you go. Yes. We lose Tim Horton. We gain 86 Oliver Ekman Larson. That is a major, major victory for us here. God damn, what a roller coaster of emotion. Whew. All right, let's go ahead. I have to check the, uh, the milestone progress, the objective progress, and we got to see if there are any sets we can do at this point. So that's that for the daily. The event, we actually get a bronze plus pack for the 75 goals. And milestone-wise, way down here, 5K. So that'll at least help continue to fund this series. So we do have a bronze pack that we have to open. I'm going to double-check the sets really quickly, though, just to make sure there's not anything else there. Monthly reward-wise, we actually might be there. We should be able to hit this by the end of the episode for completing the dailies, though, I believe, right? Just for the third game? One short. We'll see if I can complete that by the end of this episode. If not, the very beginning of next episode, that will obviously be available to us. God damn, what a win. God damn, what a pack pull. It's been a little bit since we've had, like, a crazy good pack pull, though. So, it feels good <laughs> to get back on track with ridiculousness like that. We will complete the silver rare upgrade. Nobody that we have to worry about losing there. So that's solid. And as far as the silver rares go, we'll have enough players to do this. I'll just have to make sure it doesn't trade in Rumble, more than likely. No, okay, Rumble's not in by default. Cool. So we're not going to be adding anything major. As of course, the other two gold sets have nothing for us. But we do have a couple of things to open before we spin the wheel and then get the team set. As Kale Clegg, welcome aboard. Decent little pickup there. And for the gold common, we get Chris Russell. Right. Who could come in handy if we have to team shuffle it. Let's do it. The bronze plus pack. You know what I just realized, though? You know what I just realized as we get Stefan Ulmer? Rest your starters kind of already... And I'm sure someone already commented this. Rest your starters is pretty much team shuffle. I think we might just take team shuffle out and have rest your starters. They're the same damn thing. We get nothing there. That's okay. I don't know why I just realized that. Like, as I was saying at the start of the episode, I'm like, isn't that already a thing? Uh, the answer is yes. So what we're going to do is spin the wheel for the last time this episode. And we get bankrupt as opposed to the one-pack challenge. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cheat here a little bit, right? Because I don't want to update the wheel. I am going to uh, not exactly update the team. Let me know if this is cheating, right? But for me, because we don't know what the team is going to look like, for the bankrupt, we're losing a player no matter what. Does it have to be somebody off the last team that we used, or does it have to be off of my best team possible? Let me know what you think. If it lands on Tim Horton, Jared Spurgeon is gone. If it lands on Teemu Solani, 
Teemu Solani is gone. So we just got a massive addition to this team, and somebody has got to go. Oh God, who are we losing? Say hi to the electrical panel. Alex Petrangelo. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He's been so good for us, though. Fuck. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that right-hand side just got significantly weaker with Tim Horton gone and now Petrangelo. Oh my god, Dylan Blugis, unless I play somebody on the offhand, is going to have to be in. I don't think I'm going to play Blugis. That sucks. I'm going to have to do a couple of things with this lineup. Fuck, I keep meaning to go to room. I cannot believe we just lost Petrangelo, one of our biggest polls of the series. Underrated, of course. You don't really expect him to put up points, but that is crippling. We must immediately full-on discard that Petrangelo, or at the very least, get rid of him. And uh, I think... I'm not even sure if he's worth anything, to be honest. I'll probably list him up to sell him, again, just to get coins into the team, but he will not be used. He will not be used in the trade-in. You know, it's just he's gone. He's gone. He is done. Now, if we pack him again, he's back. But for now, Alex Petrangelo is gone. I'm going to see if he sells for anything. Absolutely heartbreaking. Does he sell for anything? 7K. If I put him up for 5K, 4K. I'll sell him right now. I'll list him up for 3K, and he might sell before the episode. But... If not, feel free to check, because I'm going to list him up for three days. So, technically, by the time I'm ready to record another episode, uh, he will... Wow, this is going slow. Holy shit. Uh, technically, by the time the next episode starts, he will still be on the trade block, or the trade market, on the auction house. So, if you want to... Uh, hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... I don't even know anymore. I don't even know anymore. Here. If someone wants to do something nice, feel free. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm going to put the starting price at like 1k. That way he's guaranteed to sell eventually. And if he sells sooner than that, cool, coins don't matter in this series. Let's spin the wheel again, see what our actual challenge is going to be. Again, much like Jackpot, it's an immediate deal. It is Team Shuffle, which I'm going to skip for this episode because I think it's going to be eliminated from the wheel. And thankfully, we can't land on Bankrupt twice. <laughs> Alright, what's our actual challenge going to be? It is Injury Bug. So three players from the team have to take a seat. Who will those three players be? No Tory Krug in this next episode. So the Spotlight Challenge is gone. No Tory Krug. No Nick Schmaltz. And no Jeff Carter. Let me set up the team. No Krug, no Schmaltz, no Carter, and of course we've already lost other players on the team. <laughs> right, so here's the team for our final game of the episode. Hall, Sagan, Solani, Tara Vinen, The Last Samurai, Matthew Perot on the second line with Phil Kessel. Third line of Busick, Matthews, and Arvidsson. Fourth line, Zetterberg, Walker, Lindholm. On defense, Subban and Ekman Larson, Spurgeon and Park. Chara is going to stay in the lineup. We're not going to have a 1T on that side. It is what it is. Darnell Nurse is in the lineup because Tori Krug is out. So in terms of packs on the line, silver pack for the victory. Debut goal pack in play for Ekman Larson and Darnell Nurse. Flurry is between the pipes. Let's do this. Let's see if we can end this episode on a high note and go 3 for 3. The perfect run. Okay, I totally passed that with PK, but sure. All right, rough start. I passed the puck with PK, it didn't go anywhere, and then I thought I played the, the lane pretty well. Apparently not. Damn. Not, not a great start. And what are you, a replay watcher? This could be a fun one. Oh, 
Oh my god, Tavo is right there. That's so frustrating. That's already two plays this game where I felt like one... Oh my god, who is that? That's outracing uh, Castle. And then that... Did, okay. <laughs> it's already two plays this game where I feel like I've been in perfect position. Didn't get the intercept on either occasion. Big AI intercept. I can't believe Solani didn't score there. Sagan. Tried to go to Solani. D to D. Ekman Larson. Big deflection bid. Hextall's there. Dude, this AI back pressure is nuts because they're not having to poke check or put themselves in a position. Chara, don't be dumb. It's just that AI pressure where they just get close to you, like close enough to you and you lose it without them doing anything, it's just murdering me right now. Whereas right there, Solani was in range to do what his AIs have been doing to me. It's just not happening. Easy save. And again, he just picks it up off of my guy's tape or out of my guy's feet without issue. Walker doesn't pass when, I mean, I'm aiming to the left to pass, not to sit there and get fucking wrecked. Horrific rebound from Flurry. Good steal there from the partially dead Walker. That should have been a trip. Just judging by game logic, that should have been a trip. Char, rebound for Walker. He misses. Solani, Park, for some reason shoots that on the backhand when I'm charging up a forehand shot. The boy Matthews. And that's a major, it glitched out the hit and Matthews didn't go down. But we have a major power play here. Guarantee he wants to see it. I mean, it's a clear, like that's a clear board. It's just he glitched out and didn't go down. Darren McCarty's out of this game. And here is my opening, if there ever was one. Please come up with this, please. Please, how, how? Oh God, last game I wasn't annoyed. This game, I'm annoyed, because this is getting to be ridiculous, some of these plays. Zetterberg, over, Tavo Terabine, and there we go. Holy hell, won the first instance, I think, in this game of no weird bounces for five seconds, <laughs> and it works out for me. Don't know why they're the power play unit right now, but our lines are a mess anyway. Fucking Terravine and the Neuendijk, I wonder who's gonna win this draw. Why? Why? Why would you switch me to the left defenseman? The puck is in the middle! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we're gonna lose this game, boys. I'm more confident that I'm gonna lose this one than the other one. Like, that's- I'm sorry. You can call that making an excuse. You cannot tell me that's not illogical. That when the puck is up front, in the midst of the players right here, that it switches me to that fucking defenseman. I'm sorry, that's illogical. What else am I supposed to do there? I have to trust my two computers to make a play, or a goalie to make a save, and nobody could. So, I don't know. We are, uh, we are pretty much dead in the water, I think. I think I got lucky in that the last game, EA kind of went like, Oh, okay, you're right, you deserve something here. This game, fuck no. That lucky is gone. Unless Kessel can make that pass and Terabyne hits the post. Tavo, that should have been a trip. That's indisputable. That is indisputable. That should have been a trip. That's disgusting. OEL for Chara, or he can just... Oh, yeah, Chara. No, sure. Yeah, jump up. Act like you're going to make a play, but then when the second... The second the opportunity is there for you to actually make that play, I'm right there on that poke, and we're dead in the water. Ah. Well, it was a good run. No perfect episode this time out, but there's nothing I can do. I think that Chara play sums it up, how my AI played. I don't mind that I lost. A loss is whatever. I care about how I lost. He's a good player for sure. I'm not going to take that away from him, but that Chara play sums it up. He's not following instructions in that he's jumping, and then the second he actually has a chance to capitalize on jumping, he just fucking retreats. So... Nothing I can do there, unfortunately. This guy is going to get the win. Like I said, it's all well and good. We're not going to go perfect. It's fine. But 
It, it was no different than in the last game, where it's like, I don't mind losing if I know someone's a better player. But when it's off crazy fucking bounces and, like, people not taking tripping calls and spots where I know for a fact I would be in the penalty box if I fucking did it, you know, that kind of shit. Where it's just, yeah, it fucking ruins you. I finally got a bounce right there. That's pretty nice. And, of course, I can't beat Hextall, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm right there in that lane, and it doesn't give me the trip. Or it doesn't give me the puck, or it should have. Surprised it didn't give me a trip. That should have been a trip right there. I got no choice but to try and risk it. Taylor Hall, right back to him. If he scores here, I never want to hear anybody say, oh, you're just complaining ever again. <laughs> uh, he's going to rag it out. So we do end up losing our final game, which, again, fine by me. Am I aggravated with how I lost it? Sure, because I feel like it's just one of those games that came down to, yep, yeah, this is how it goes for you. Sorry, deal with it. Uh, I might be able to get a little bit of revenge with this fight here. Maybe Scott Walker can be somewhat useful. Or not, he can miss a punch while he missed time to tie up. That's fine. This is going to be a boring fight. Yeah, nothing's going to happen. Neither of us are going to throw. We both fight the same way. Because we both know what we're doing. So, again. Oh, well, you done goofed. And there you go. That's what you get for punching. So, yay! I get my little bit of revenge winning a fight. Because, unfortunately for him, uh, fighting, that doesn't come down to bounces. <laughs> so, that's good. Well, like I said, man. People can view it as complaining, and that's fine. I think you know my reaction at this point to what this game is, as he's going to call his timeout to be like, I'm going to make you wait 30 seconds. I don't care. Little does he know, I'm running a YouTube series. The longer this video runs, the more ads I can put on it. Revenue. So I win, even when I'm losing. You see how that works. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I think you can tell by the time on attack. And I think we can get a look at the shot chart at the end of the game, where you can just tell he just steps over the blue line and takes shots. Uh, to make his stats look better, which is fine. But, again, I think, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to pause it on him. You think I'm mad? I can waste your time, too. Um, it's just one of those games. Like, I'm sorry, if you play this game, you know how it works. And you know that when two people are fairly well matched up, it comes down to player attributes to a point up to where it's like, okay, if you have 90 overalls against 90 overalls, diminishing returns, it doesn't really matter. But eventually, something has to be the tiebreaker. And whether that comes down to random 50-50 plays, random bounces, examples of AI, um, you know, knocking the puck loose without doing anything, or whatever else, you know, that's what it eventually comes down to. If calling that out makes me a whiner, a complainer, my God, you always got to have an excuse in your opinion, then that's fine. But, you know, anyone who's played the game for long enough knows that it is what it is. And yes, I have to call it out, because otherwise, you just sit here and you go, mm, the fucking bullshit. And it's like, no. I mean, it is bullshit. I'm just going to be more vocal about it. <laughs> but regardless, we do lose our last game. Can I see his shot chart? Did he take it? Actually, in fairness, he took quite a few shots from the, uh, the outside marker. Okay, so let's see. One shot from the outside, two in the middle, including the goal. Uh, let's see. First period. Got some outside shots there. A lot of outside shots there. So, he got some good shots. Actually, you know what? I want to take a further look at that. I want to take a further look at that. Like I said, he took some outside shots. Not all. But I just want to take a look at where Hextall was stopping me from. So, nothing too crazy there. Second period, I was, you know, he was under siege in the slot and it just wasn't working out. First period, couple of outside shots. So, like I said, it is what it is. At the end of the day, we lost. We go two and one on the episode. I'm good with it. Um, again, the I know what the game is at this point. The tactics from him of being like, oh, I'm gonna call my timeout after losing my fight to waste your time, buddy. I'm playing NHL. I'm already resigning to wasting my time. <laughs> you can't make me feel like any more of a loser than I already do. So there you go. Uh, let's quickly, and I do mean quickly, uh, take a look. Buy three items from the auction house to complete the collectible. That is garbage. We'll get that December monthly collectible next time out. That won't be a problem. I do want to quickly double check, because of course we did not earn anything from that game, uh, whether or not either the jersey or logo sets are close. And I thought one was... 
We might have a chance. I think we're going to fall just short on these, unfortunately. And they're going to take forever to load. So I think what we'll do is hit you with the lovely outro. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tad bit fiery, of course. But, you know, when you have close games and they come down to being decided the way they come down to being decided, uh, you know, it is what it is, and it happens. Thankfully, I came up on the better end of it in the second game. Came up on the short end of it in that third game. Yeah, we don't have anything yet, but we are getting close. Big episode, though. Again, our first of two with that Tamu Solani. Of course, Tim Horton's loan expires. We lose Alex Petrangelo, but gain Oliver Ekman Larson. The, uh, you know, it continues, it continues to take some twists and turns. Hopefully, though, we find ourselves in Div 3. Uh, that would be unfortunate to have our first ever halt be in Div 4. If anything, that might even be slightly embarrassing. Although, quickly, I do want to take a look. What do we got? What do we got? 101, 83, and 13. I want to look at that team. I'm really struggling on face-offs right now. Like, really struggling on face-offs consistently. Jesus Christ, these other teams, though. 95. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not going to be the guy who has his number one center as Neuendijk, even if it's alone. I just cannot compete with that. At least this is the type of team that I'm losing to. So, uh, you know, I can uh, hang my head high knowing that... Uh, you know, I'm getting decimated by... And again, Ron Hextall just... Oh, I fucking hate Ron Hextall. <laughs> more than any Flyers fan. Oh, God. He has robbed me more than any other goalie in the series. We are done here. For now, though, again, I hope you did enjoy. Uh, next episode, we look to get back to our winning ways. Have we ever lost back-to-back -back games in this series? I don't know if we have. Next episode might be the first time. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think as far as the team shuffle slash rest your starters rule... Uh, basically those two being combined. And uh, yeah, till next time. Have a good one. Make sure to check out everything else on the channel because remember that sweet ad revenue I mentioned before. And I'll see you guys next time. We lost because I wasn't wearing the hat. I know.